the WDC explains it all in one slide. Quote, discuss essay questions. Quote, discuss questions are particularly common in the arts and humanities. They present you with a quotation from the work of a scholar and simply ask you to discuss it. Other ways this type of question can be phrased include critically discuss the following statement or discuss the extent to which this statement is evident in in the everyday sense, discuss just means to talk about, and if you're just talking about the quotation, that can become directionless. There's no argument or conclusion that you're trying to reach, and therefore no direction or structure to get you there. It can also be quite descriptive. Just talking about something doesn't really give you opportunities to exercise higher level thinking like critical analysis. You might even find yourself avoiding these discuss questions as they feel a bit vague. Essays and other assignments at university are very rarely asking you just to demonstrate what you know, the facts and information that you've learned. They're asking you to use what you know to solve a problem of some kind, something that's complicated or tricky, and which probably has more than one possible right answer, as long as you can justify your conclusion with valid reasoning and evidence. With questions like discuss, which technically isn't a question at all, there's no question mark, the trick is to figure out the implied question or problem. This might help give it more of a focused direction and reveal the higher level complexity that you need to engage with. There's more than one way to engage with a discuss question, so let's look at how you might interpret it. One way to approach a discuss question is to assume that the quotation is true and accept it, but you need to demonstrate that you understand it by showing how it's true, presenting your own evidence that supports it. This is where it helps to know a bit about the scholar they've quoted and how authoritative and accepted that statement is. If it's a very mainstream opinion by a recognised authority, then you probably don't want to question it too much, but write about how you can see that opinion reflected in the topic or the case study that you're looking at. With this approach, you're demonstrating application of your learning, applying a theory to help explain a particular circumstance better. However, you can question and disagree with scholars. This shows a greater degree of independent thinking. If the quotation seems to be a bit one-sided, limited, extreme or polemic, then the essay might actually be inviting you to challenge it. We're now answering the implied question, is this true? How true is it? Your argument becomes more analytical and critical as you test the truth of that opinion in a particular situation against the examples and evidence you've gathered. It doesn't mean that you have to disagree with the opinion given or that it's completely wrong. You'll probably find that you're coming to a more nuanced understanding of it, that it's partly true in some ways and not in others. In terms of higher level thinking, this approach allows you to demonstrate your critical analysis. If you're feeling adventurous, then you can go beyond the opinion a little and think about what it doesn't explain or what opinions or other viewpoints would also be worth considering. If the opinion in the title is only partly true or not the most compelling explanation or theory, then what other viewpoints would be more convincing? You might find a different scholar whose interpretation is more valid, or you might propose a theory of your own. This approach is probably an extension of your response to the question, though, a final twist to add rather than a full compare and contrast of two viewpoints. A discuss question does require a fairly tight focus on the quotation itself, but this approach will allow you to demonstrate synthesis and create a more original response of your own.